lecture for week 3 and uh, this is basically the first introduction to arrays we will have uh, more on arrays in the coming week but uh, this is just basically a very uh, very brief introduction to what arrays are so um, let us just start by you know going back to the example that we saw in the last lecture where uh, we were expecting the user to enter the marks that uh, he or she obtained in the exams and then the total number of uh, you know the maximum marks that uh, that those exams had and uh, what we want what we were simply doing was we were just calculating the percentage out of these two pieces of information so let's just you know add one more program out there which can also help the user in summing up the marks okay so this is a very simple program you know all we are doing here is just uh, uh, you know we have two two variables total marks and total maximum marks and then uh, let's just assume that the user has five subjects so i have these marks one marks two marks three marks four marks five these are five integer variables and uh, then i have these max one max two max three max four max five so these are uh, five variables to store the maximum marks for each subject right so th these are basically the 10 variables uh, that i'm going to use and then you know rest is, is pretty regulation i just uh, take input just sum up sum them up and simply show it to the user um, but just imagine if we had more subjects right i mean five for five we needed uh, 10 variables now now imagine if we had even more subjects um, it will actually become tedious to uh, create so many variables in my program uh, especially when uh, almost all of them are doing exactly the same job right they're just uh, storing marks for uh, some particular subject fortunately most of the programming languages that we have uh, they also have another mechanism with the help of which you can group variables of the same type okay uh, this mechanism is known as array so basically what exactly is array an array is nothing more than a collection of individual variables right so let us say um, i was storing marks one marks two marks three you know we were, I, I was having these th five uh, uh, different variables now if i want i can just create one array which is basically a collection of five variables okay it's five integer variables so and uh, all i have to do is then i simply have to say you know i want to access the nth variable in this in this whole list okay and as i said it is ordered so it means that uh, the order of these variables matter there is a variable which is the first variable then the second variable then the third variable so on and so forth um, so what we really do is we have we assign all these variables an index okay index as in uh, first second third fourth uh, however um, instead of starting with one uh, we start these indices in computer science usually by zero okay so this is not something that is that is specific to c um, this is usually what happens in computer science you know most of the time when we whenever you will be using an array uh, the first index would probably start by zero and it will run up to size minus one so let us say i have an array of uh, of a particular size um, you know basically the size of an array means the number of variables you want to uh, group together um, so then the, the index of the first variable would be zero and the index of the last variable in this group will be size minus one so then the total becomes size now the size of an array cannot be changed once you have created it right so you the only option that you get uh, is to is to create the array of a sufficient size right if you for example later onwards in your program if you want to simply increase the size of the array that you cannot do so at the start of the uh, you know of the program itself you'll have to know what should be the size of your array okay and uh, in order to create an array you need these two pieces of information first you will basically have to tell me what type of variable are you going to store in there and then the number of variables of this type that you want in this group so in c the syntax to create an array looks very simple something it's very simple it, it looks something like this uh, it basically says the type of the array so in this case it is int i want uh, you know a collection of uh, int variables uh, the name of the array so the name here is arr then these square break 
brackets so as i said uh, you know in some previous lectures that uh, this is the reason that you don't use all different types of brackets right you only use parentheses because the other brackets the the square and curly brackets they have some other meaning in programming so that is why you only use parentheses you just uh, keep on using more parentheses in the same expression instead of using different types of brackets as you probably would have done in mathematics so anyhow so this is basically the square brackets and uh, you put the size of the array the number of variables you want in this collection at this particular point so this is a very simple example of how you declare an array um, now in the earlier versions of C uh, this size thing right whatever you are providing within the square brackets uh, this size thing uh, uh, this size thing was was actually it, it was supposed to be a constant right so constant as in um, so say like 10 is a constant you, you guys already know what is the difference between a constant and a variable so in the in the earlier versions of C this was supposed to be only a constant you cannot use a variable here so as as you can see here what I'm doing is I'm first declaring a variable and I'm assigning it some value and then when I'm creating the array at that time um, I'm just passing this as a size uh, now in the earlier versions of C this was not uh, legal but the current versions of C this is actually perfectly fine so but but keep this in mind right what the only liberty you are getting here is that uh, for example you can ask the user something like you know what size of array do you want the user can say you know I want a size of 5 or 10 or 15 and then your array becomes a size uh, of that particular number right but remember once you create this okay once a statement like this gets executed then the size cannot be changed okay um, even if the variables value changes okay so this is this is something that you have to realize that for example if later you know after executing this statement the value of size changes to 9 or 11 uh, the size of array remains exactly the same it is not going to become 9 or 11 it will remain exactly 10 now you know you we have seen how to initialize simple variables you simply say something like int i equal to 2 uh, there is a similar syntax to initialize the variables within an array uh, this is how you do that you basically use the curly brackets the braces right uh, they are they are being used here and you simply provide the values uh, one after the other by putting a comma in between so this is so essentially this means that uh, you know the first variable in this array gets initialized to 10 the second one gets to 20 third one to 30 and again when I say first it essentially means index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3 and index 4 because the indices start from 0. So this is the same program the only thing that has changed now is that uh, instead of uh, those 10 variables that I created I have simply created two arrays of size 5 each um, and then this is the way I access them you know uh, at the, the, the same place where uh, I, I Put the size at the same place if I put a, a number then this particular uh, this particular expression means that I want the zeroth variable of max array uh, similarly I want the zeroth variable of the max array so I have two set of arrays here and uh, uh, you know when I put these numbers within the square brackets they become the indices so 0 1 2 3 4 are the indices and then this is this is the simple scanf that uh, we already know about right so now there is one special type of uh, array uh, that is there in c and we call it strings okay so strings are uh, you know as such in many languages strings are provided as a basic data type right so you don't actually have to create strings out of uh, character arrays or char arrays but in C, um, strings are just basically a collection uh, of characters and uh, they are essentially char arrays, right? So char is the basic data type that you already know. And uh, if you create an array of char, um, you can use it like a string. So now, uh, how does a typical character array differ from uh, a string? So the first thing is that uh, a string uh, by convention is terminated by special character 
called backslash zero or the null character. So it is something like this. Uh, if I have a uh, if I have a character array of size 10 uh, and let us say I want to store store hello in this then what happens is uh, uh, you know on zeroth index h gets stored on first index you know one th index e gets stored on second index uh, l gets stored then on index 3 it is l again and then index 4 it is o and index 5 okay so basically right after your string has ended index 5 is occupied by this particular special character so essentially this special character the null character is a way with the help of which um, functions such as printf okay they can actually figure out that this is actually this is in, this is actually a, a string and and not really a simple collection of characters uh, you know in 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 the world of the in the world of human beings this probably means something it is probably a word or a sentence or or something that that makes sense to us you know the human beings so so uh, these functions like printf what they have a convention that uh, if inside a character array uh, they find this particular character then whatever is before this character that is actually a string right um, remember you can always use character arrays as you use any other array as well right um, the moment you start putting a null character in a character array we actually call it a string now uh, you know just specifically for character arrays there is another way of initialization so basically this is the common way of initialization that you would have seen for uh, uh, you know for uh, for any data type that you basically start with braces and then you provide the values by the way uh, I'm not sure whether I have told you guys before or not but uh, in C if you want to write a particular character right a b c d you just include it into uh, single quotes okay and uh, strings basically what we are just talking about here they are included into double quotes so double quote strings you have already seen we have used uh, these strings as uh, as messages in printf um, if you want to talk about individual characters they go inside single quotes and uh, complete strings go inside double quotes so basically this these two statements are are actually uh, you know both legal as well as equivalent to each other so in the first one i am explicitly uh, initializing this five character uh, uh, five character array to h i and this you know null character and in the second way and this is what i am saying this this is a special way of dif uh, of uh, initializing a character array where the actual uh, input the actual uh, initialized uh, value is a string uh, if, if, if you want to do that you can do that as well you can just put this string into double quotes uh, it will eventually be stored just like this only right so the, uh, the the null character here in this particular case gets added implicitly you don't actually have to put a null character here okay when you when you initialize the character array like this the null character is added by default and note that in both these cases this is something that I, I, should, I did not actually mention explicitly that when you are initializing an array it is not necessary that you initialize all the variables okay it's just that the first uh, let's say out of n if the size is n you can define the first k you cannot uh, initialize you know uh, variables in between and leave the others but uh, you can actually initialize a subset of the total array as well so so in both cases uh, only three out of the five slots are going to be occupied and the rest two um, so what we really say is we they, they are going to have garbage values so what i mean by garbage values is that um, you know there it will be some value that we don't know okay some uh, some random characters out there uh, so this is another problem actually we see um, c doesn't actually clean up uh, clean up locations when it assigns it to a variable so if you do not uh, assign a specific value if you do not initialize a variable uh, before using it then uh, you are in for a surprise there could be any value lying at that particular memory location we call these values as garbage values by the way uh, this is just a beginning of arrays okay uh, this is just a, uh, an introduction to arrays 
we'll have another lecture on arrays once we have uh, learned how to use loops uh, and we'll have another lecture okay that will be specifically dedicated to how to use strings more practically okay because strings as a data type you are going to encounter them many a time especially when you uh, start doing more serious programming so we will dedicate towards the end of this course a complete lecture that will be just about strings you know and there will be another lecture about arrays as well so this is a very simple example of string um, this is how you you create the string you basically create a character array and here I'm using that uh, second type of uh, initialization mechanism um, and just I've just shown the same thing here that basically if this is the index you know the variable uh, the different care variables what do they get they get h i and null character and x x basically means some kind of garbage value um, there are two methods two library functions that we use specifically to input and uh, output strings uh, these are get s and put s so the difference between put s string and let us say printf string uh, in the using printf to print string is that put s will also add a slash n at the end of your string so basically uh, you know remember all the problems that we had with printf that uh, we have to explicitly add a, add a slash n towards the end that problem is not there with put s put s will uh, put your string out there and then put a slash n again uh, when i say string in this particular case it is not going to print any garbage characters the moment it it recognizes this slash zero it will stop here okay so for them for for put s uh, even though the overall character array is longer than that it will simply stop reading after that right so so this is what will happen so uh, it will just give you high okay and nothing after that now uh, there is one more uh, library function that i have used here and that is get s so get s is being used here to take input okay so i have a uh, the same five character array and by the way if uh, if i have a five character array you, you might have already realized that i can only st store four character strings in it because the last character must be the slash zero backslash zero um, by the way if you if you do not use it there are a number of problems that you might run into uh, you know if you do, if you do if you try to store let us say the fifth character in your uh, uh, in your five character array there might be more problems and uh, in, in there is a warning here that uh, that the compiler is giving me uh, just check your homework what that warning is and uh, figure it out okay so this was a short lecture guys uh, we'll discuss this on tuesday